Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create an RPG in Unity and welcome to episode 29. So in this tutorial what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at creating a menu which encompasses all of our stats, our quests, our weapons, our items. So we're going to start constructing that over the next couple of tutorials. It's quite a lengthy task but it's not as hard as what you would think. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with the rest of this series and everything else that I have on my channel. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So the idea of what we're going to have to do here is, let's say when we press the escape button, we want a menu to appear. And ideally what we want it to also do is pause the game. So essentially we will be pausing the game while we can play around in our menus. You don't necessarily have to pause your game, you could keep everything real time, but I'll explain to you the point of what you would need to change in the script to do so. So let's go to the scripts folder. And can we really place it in any other uh, subfolders? Maybe, maybe not, maybe we'll create a new one. Uh, for now, I, I'm just gonna leave it in here. So if we do need to place it in any subfolders later on, if it becomes too many scripts to just do one certain thing, then we probably will create a subfolder. But for now, we'll leave it here. So let's create a C sharp script and we'll call it, I'll just call it inventory menu. And let's open it up in Visual Studio. So like I said, we're gonna have to pause the game or we don't have to, I guess, but I'm going to use a pause feature uh, just kind of bring two things into one. So pause and menu are going to be the same button. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit to the actual map so we can see it. Zoom in on our NPC. So what do we need to do to get this to work? Okay, so there are a couple of things that we're going to need. We're going to need three variables at least. Do we need three? No, actually, maybe we can do it in two. I think we can do it in two, actually. We'll make this as short as we can. Uh, so let's get rid of void start and any annotations. We don't need them, but we will be using void update because it's going to be a continually monitored thing. So firstly, we're going to have to have a bool to check if we are actually paused or not, or in the menu or not. So public bool, and we'll have inv open semicolon. So that means is the inventory open? And I think by default, we should actually have that as false because it won't be. Uh, do we have any music in our game? I don't think we do. I, I don't think we've added any yet, have we? Let's quickly check. Uh, we've got audio objects and we have just the heart collect. So I think we'll probably start looking at music and a bit more sound effects pretty soon because it's a bit barren in the way of audio. Uh, so that's fine. And we'll actually create a menu after we've written this script, but we'll just call it inv menu. So public game object and this is in menu semicolon so what do we need to do here well we need to make sure that we're pressing the correct buttons to open our menu and i did say i was going to use the escape key so let's go back into unity let's go to edit and let's go to project settings and let's go to input so we need to make sure we've dealt with this before we're using this one here the name cancel, you can see it's positive button is escape. That's what we're going to use. So remember the word cancel. So back in the script, we need to type here, if, and in brackets, input dot get button down, and in brackets and quotes, cancel. We've already done this type of script before, so we know what we're doing here. Open curly bracket. At this point, we need to do an if or else statement because we need to check if the inventory is open or not. So in this case, we need to go if, and in brackets, inv open equals false, which it will be by default, then we perform the following. So if you actually want your game to pause, like me, you would have this line now time dot time scale equals zero semicolon so the idea of what this is is by default time scale is going to be one number one is real time zero is stopped two would be double time so the higher the number the quicker time passes the lower the number the slower time passes so this would effectively pause our game because zero would make everything stop so at this point, let's make inv 
open equals true because it is. Next, what we need to do is we need to display our cursor, don't we? Because we're going to be clicking things in the menu. So cursor dot visible equals true semicolon. And we don't really have any music, but we'll probably add to that at some point. Now what we need to do is in menu dot set active true semicolon and that's all there is to it for that bit anyway so we have our if statement to say if it's if we're pressing cancel and if it's false then we can open it we also need that else statement because we now need to say the opposite of that so we'll do it in exact reverse so we'll have in menu dot set active true uh, sorry false because we want to turn it off don't we apologies so next what would happen is cursor dot visible equals false so cursor dot visible equals false semicolon so you can see what we're doing we're going backwards up this list so next we would naturally have in open equals false because it no longer is because we pressed escape again to get it off and finally time dot time scale equals one so reset it back to normal and save that script and if you have any problems with the script it'll be on the website downloaded assets go to the rpg series and under tutorial number 29 so we've written a script let's attach this to our scene and then let's create a quick simple object which can be used as our pause menu which we'll make look pretty next time so game object and let's go to ui and we'll start with let's start with a panel for now and let's double click the panel and let's adjust this into a more appropriate shape now it's up to you how you want your menu to be do you want it to be over the entire screen so for example i am going to quickly uh, change the alpha on this to 255 so we can see it completely do you want your menu to be just like that it covers the entire screen if so then that's entirely up to you if not you could do what i'm going to do i'm going to kind of close it down a little bit so i'm going to have the alpha as probably about 150 so it is a little bit see-through at this point and i think i'm going to click on the rec tool right here and reduce the size to about there maybe so this is going to be our entire menu maybe it's too big I'm, I'm not entirely sure maybe it's too small in fact I think I'm actually going to increase it maybe just a little bit more probably to about there so as we do see some game in the background but the majority of the screen is going to be our menu so let's right click on panel rename and have this as inventory menu so this object is going to encase everything within the menu, i.e. we'll probably have some like tabs where we can click and it changes to say, or buttons maybe, some, something kind of cool that can change within the menu. So it's actually interactable, much like how our main menu is. That's the idea of what we're doing here. So at this point, let's take a look at what we have within our hierarchy. Now, a lot of different items and objects are all in different things. So for example, we have this one, uh, health monitor that's just for the health it's up to you how you want your entire scene to be so we have you know just the quest manager here the quest objects and we also have the global stat object so because the menu here is going to be connected with stats more than anything i think i'm going to have my inventory menu attached to the global stat object i remember it is going to run every frame so it is checking whether we are pressing that escape button or not. So now we need to attach this that we've created into the inventory menu variable. So drag and drop onto there. And let's set the actual inventory menu as off. So now if we press play, we should be able to play our game as normal. But if we press the escape button, nah, that's one thing we've got to do. So we've actually got to stop a couple of things because you'll notice in here now he carries on moving we can still move our mouse around we can't walk around but we can still move our mouse around 
So what this comes down to is how things are manipulated. So for example, if we go to the actual uh, NPC that is wandering around, let's find him. It's not him, is it? No, it's this one. So on here, if we have Necro NPC Dest, that's what uh, he's going. That's where he's going to. And script is the Necrowalk AI. So if we go to that Necrowalk AI, essentially what we have to do is we have to make it so as his movement is relative to the time scale of the game. So that means that if we have move towards here, he's going to here, and this is the speed. So what we do with the speed is multiply that by time dot time scale and save. So what's going to happen here is his movement is always going to be tied to the time scale of the game. So his movement is this times one, he'll move. When we set this to zero, this will be zero, so he won't move. He'll actually pause. And essentially, what we have to do within, uh, for example, the uh, camera movement. Now, the camera movement is a funny old thing because if we go to our first person controller right here, and I think it is this one we can stop. So we need to stop this script right here. So I, I think we should be able to just quite simply go to the inventory menu and then add in a variable public game object and we'll call it the player semicolon and what we can do is after we've set the inventory active we can have the player dot get component and in spiky brackets uh, what's the name of the script it is first person controller so first person controller open close bracket dot enabled equals false and up here we'll need to put in using unity engine dot um, gosh what is it dot is it characters i know it's one of these names bases <laughs> it's been a while uh okay i cannot find it it's not, okay either way We'll sort this out anyway, because essentially what we need to do is get hold of that component and change it. Because let's just test out this guy right here for now. So really what is happening here is as we look around, we can quite clearly see that he is walking around. And the same will apply for this character. Now if we pause here, you'll see that this character does actually stop. They, they stop dead simply because their animation is tied exactly to the time scale. So all animations, as I say, are tied to time scales. And the reason for that is because if you remember in the animation tab, yep, the animation tab just here, well, that's all done by frames, isn't it? So when we set the time scale to zero, we're actually turning all of the uh, frames to stop basically that's just how it's working and ultimately like i say with this npc if we press escape on him there we go he's stopped remember i said he is tied to um the actual time scale and you've got to remember that everything that moves needs to be tied to time scale so what i think i'll do is we will quickly check out the other uh things we have here uh, what I might do actually is pause it, or rather stop it, and drag our character over to the uh, spider over here, because let's just see what happens with that. So let's take our character all the way over here, press play, and we shall have a look. So, if we go, oh I don't think it's appeared, has he? Oh, of course, it's because of the quest. <laughs> we haven't activated the quest. So uh, either way, everything that does move needs to be tied to uh, the time scale. I'll quickly check that when we're off screen, but obviously you would uh, check that yourself anyway. So like I said, let's finally sort out that movement of camera. Um, so it's going to be using, I think it's Unity. There it is, that's my fault. I was using Unity Engine, it's Unity Standard Assets. And we'll have 
characters dot first person semicolon. So then obviously that's when we can use the first person controller component. So we have the player dot get component and it's spiky brackets first person controller right there. Oh, close bracket dot enabled equals false semicolon. Then let's copy that line of code into the else statement right here, change it to true and save. And then we just need to attach the player to that variable. Once Unity's had a think, compiled it, there we go. Uh, so global stat object and just attach F, uh, FP controller, FPS controller right there onto there and press play. And now let's bring up our menu and we've stopped moving. So you notice the hearts as well. They just need to be set via time scale if you want them paused as well. It's entirely up to you. And that's it. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we'll take a look at making everything look a little bit prettier. Uh, we'll make that menu interactable. So we'll start adding data to it from what we've got. So I quest names, uh, locations, a bit of information, stuff like that. And uh, once that's done, we'll start moving on to really cool stuff. I promise there's going to be some cool stuff after that. So guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.